Well, boy, you know, it's been a long day. 13 hours to get here. We're in Idaho Falls, Idaho. It's gonna be fun. The weather's a little cooler here. We're at about 4,700 feet of altitude, and we're here to see Boondocker. Boondocker headquarters, we're gonna go visit them. They called us up and they said, Louis, come on, check out our turbo systems for sleds, bikes, and razors. We know you're interested in all that kind of stuff. And we had a good chat. It feels like it's a pretty good mix. So we decided to fly down here, check out Boondocker headquarters, check out all their products, install some of their products, and then hit the dunes. And that's what we're gonna do right now. But first, we need to go over to the headquarters, talk to Rocky, he's the owner, and then I'd get a feeling for the place. We just got here. We're a little tired, so let's check it out. Right on. Boondocker headquarters. Yes. I've always wondered about this place. So let's go in and uh, meet the fellas. Door right here. We get we get the back door back door pass here at Boondocker. Look at that. Hold on. Oh, see, this is it's gonna. This is overwhelming already. I'm telling you right now. Do they do they do this to the tires? Yeah, it's rough and buff. That's Gunner. That's Gunner. Gunner. I saw Gunner in a video earlier. I think. Yeah, one or two of the. I'm already tied up, fellas. Oh, yeah, I see this uh, machine right here. You're. Uh, hey guys, come here. Check this fella out here. Is Devin right? Yep. This Devin. is Devin. I talked to your grandpa, yeah, Rocky, senior. On Rocky, Rocky Senior, Rocky Senior. Uh, your dad's Rocky Junior. Junior, yep. And uh, anyway, when I talked to your grandpa, he said, you know, honestly, I don't watch many YouTube videos, but uh, my grandson knows exactly who Power Mods <laughs> is. Watches them all the time. He said, he's coming to town. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> that's awesome. But you know, this is like a kid in a candy shop kind oh, of thing. Yeah. So, come on in. Let's let's, uh, let's see. Uh, let's visit or meet everybody here. Hey there. That's good stuff. And then, I started mapping up the little bit more. The, uh, this oh. one's like full built, turning over 9,000 RPMs. This thing's a beast, and it runs on nothing less than like 20 pounds of boost. This car is a rocket ship. Is it running nav gas in it? No. What's it running? Race oh, it is race fuel. Ah, uh, okay. It's 112 in this one, don't we? Yeah, I think we use the Sunoco 112. Okay, who makes these tires? Uh, these are scan track tire, and so they make whatever tire we want. We're a dealer for them, so whatever tire we want, we can have So they they grind these off, and then they put these lugs yeah, on? They buff them, glue the lugs on for us, whatever configuration, whatever path we want. Wow. And then MSA 18-inch wheel. These are staggered. The staggered is like a, like a snowmobile track paddle. So this yeah. one's straight up, this one's to the left, and this one's to the right. And okay, okay, the uh, but let's stop here. Uh, okay, so you, what what man, what brand of tire is this, or does that really even matter? What are those? Uh, what? Let me go look at them. <laughs> but, but you you have these ground down or buffed, you said? Yeah. So this this is how we do all of our tires. They're all customized so that we can get the paddle, you know, construction and everything we want. There's a whole bunch of different paddles you can choose, different heights and how stiff they are. And so we we can start with a tire, any size tire we want, buff it down, and then have the paddles configured however we want. Um, that's pretty cool. And uh, I'm Louis, by the way. I'm Junior. <laughs> Rocky Junior. Uh, this is kind of how my brain thinks. Uh, is the same way my mouth talks. I just start to see things and I just start running in on it because this is really neat. This is we don't deal with this. This is completely different than anything I'd see back home. Yeah. Uh, in fact, we're getting a lot of a lot of guys will call scat. And we're getting a lot of Canadians. They 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 think Idaho, North Canada, North. And so as soon as you talk to Ramon at Scat, he's like, "Call Boondocker." <laughs> I get a bunch of Canadians. <laughs> oh, yeah. Going, yeah, it's funny. Right on. But anyways, yeah. So we send these over. These are a cool tire, a 32 inch tire, and on an 18 inch wheel. Yeah, and it's really wheel. unique. And so we 
they start out looking like these over here. Well, they're the, they're the EFX Moto MTCs. Ah, uh, yeah, like okay. That. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, with your with an 18-inch wheel, then you're you're looking at not as much sidewall uh, movement flexing. Yeah, yeah, and so this is really experimental. That's what say, but this is how we do all of our sand tires. Have been really experimental all year. In fact, I'm it's talking to Scat. I talked to him a little bit about what works, and they're like, you know, you just got to try some stuff. Sure. He gives me some good pointers. And, you know, and I listen to him and then I, and I'm like, well, what about this? And he's like, I don't know, Junior. He's got a really strong oh, yeah, yeah. Mexican accent. I don't know. You can try it. And so we, we try different paddles and we've come up with a configuration that we really like. More like this. This is what we've been running all season. Whoa, look at that. This starts out as a 30, uh, 30 inch tire and they buff it down. And then this is just a side by side stagger. 14 paddle ripper. Now why would they buff it all the way? Just curious. Uh, there's a couple reasons. One is it makes the, side, the sidewall more flexible. So the tire gets more flex. So it starts squatty. Uh, and then at okay. high speeds it stands up. Kind of like a dragster tire. Um, it makes them really light. I mean you picked it up. It's, it's really pretty light. Yeah it is. It is. Yeah. It's also a beadlock wheel too. Yeah I saw that. Yeah wow. And uh, you do you buff the, the, the front Yeah and there's well. different kinds of buffs you can do too. This is what they call a rough buff. And we go bead to bead to take the weight off the tire, right. and then we leave them rough, so it's like it's like running on the carpet. It gives you just a little bit of traction. We run these in four wheel drive, so they they drive. It gives you that kind of cornering over the tops of the sharp dunes. Yeah, and like stuff. Uh, way back when they used to have these just bald, but like a smooth bald. Mm -hmm. Yeah, you the can old, go the old school. You can go over these and buff them again and make them really really smooth. Oh, yeah. But we leave them we leave them rough like this intentionally. Gives them just a little bit of uh, grippy or feel. Okay, so you shave that right down. Very good. So you don't have the well. We have, back home we deal with rocks. I mean, it would be a little different. You're not dealing with rocks here. You're playing in the sand for We're, the most part. Yeah, this is on the sand, and we try to avoid the rocks. Yeah, yeah, um, yeah. That we run really low tire pressures, and so if you get into the rocks too much, you'll pinch you'll pinch a sidewall or something. Yeah. Anyways, there, and there is some rocks out there, and we would just avoid them. Yeah. This is this is really yeah, just a sand setup only. Oh, wow, that's pretty cool. Very neat. Yeah. Oh, that's what they started out like. And that, sorry, these are 30, 31s? Thirty ones. These are 32s. 32s. Yeah, wow. That, I think they're like 32 tens. That is a big tire. And they're heavy too. Yeah. Thirty-two. All that's the weight when we take off. No them, kidding. Like, them down. Yeah. <laughs> wow. Yeah, that is a. Uh, it's too bad that you're buying all that extra rubber when, <laughs> and then grinding it off, right? Right. Wow. Very cool. Well. Oh, and this guy here, Louis, Jared. Jared, nice to meet you. you're you're one of the uh, the head techs here. I understand. Yeah, I do a lot of R and D, infield, product development, layouts, and just a little bit of everything. So yeah. sales. Okay, so what's your background? What uh, you? my background is I grew up around power sports my whole life. Uh, came from a Polaris dealership out of uh, West Yellowstone, Montana. Worked uh, with Boondocker from the beginning of Boondocker and. You know, Rocky kept on trying to get me to come work for him, and so I kind of made my dream come true and started a new life down here with these guys. So. Well, I'll be pretty rough working in the shop every day. You know, it's well, a lot of fun. Yeah. It's a lot of fun. <laughs> Mostly yeah. fun. Yeah. Turns into work once in a while, but yeah. it all comes with the territory for sure. Yeah. So. Now, Devin, how yeah. old are you? I'm 19. You're 19. I've been working here pretty much since I dropped out of eighth grade, yeah. so. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> you got it made, son. That's awesome. Yeah. Yep, That's started good. learning how to weld and then just kept fabricating and been fabricating parts yeah. for a while now. So you um, you work on the sleds, the development. You take these things out all the time. You, ha you must have to, like, you must have to take these out constantly to, to work with clutching and the tire stuff. And yeah. We spend a lot of time, you know, just ripping around, testing. You know, if our product doesn't work for us, it's not going to work for our customers. So we want to make sure that we're, you know, providing the best product we can for our customers. So it takes a lot of seat time and it right. takes a lot of dedication, you know, both shop time and, you know, real world testing, you know, dynos, stuff like that. You know, you really can get just the baseline, but if you're not using the product and putting it through all the paces, you're never really going to realize what's going on. So. Well, I know, you know, I, I visit a lot of different shops, clutch guys, um, shocks, uh, you know, uh, exhaust. There's so much time. A lot of people will say when I look at a different product, oh, the price of that is ridiculous. You know, well, why would they charge so much? Well, think about how much time goes into uh, developing just R&D, thought process, paper, building it, 
installing it, taking it, and testing it, especially when it comes to something as fine-tuning as a clutch or, well, even for tires, you know, just playing well, with the paddles on the tires. It all adds up, you know, clutches, tires, vehicle handling, turbo, what combination works the best, you know, for the mountain guy, the rock crawling guy, the sand guy, so it's just a matter of, you know, testing and tuning in all the different scenarios, and, you know, yeah, price does get high, but, I mean, we got stacks and stacks of parts, and, you know, we throw more parts away than we'll ever use, you know, just testing, trying to get the right yeah. thing that works, for sure. Yeah, yeah wow. Okay. What else did you have to show? Oh my God, look at, so like <laughs> this all started out with, uh, well, where's Rocky? Yeah, you're, I've talked you're to him Rocky. on the phone because we have to have everybody here. <laughs> and he is the man who made it all happen. We got, yeah, we're going to have a right big happy family. No, I think he's just over there chat. Yeah. Okay. Rocky, I did talk to you on the phone. Hello. And uh, you know, we had a great conversation. Uh, I have a Razor, I drive it, and you know, it's, it doesn't really have any power adders, you know, it doesn't have a, a turbo on it. And you were trying to explain to me, because I play in the mud mostly. You're like, Louie, I don't think you're understanding how powerful these uh, machines are out in the sand dunes. So you're just going to have to come out here and try these out and see what it is that we do with them. And uh, boy, just after a, a short conversation, the next thing we knew, we're on plane. We're heading out here to Boondocker. And i got to thank you very much for inviting us. There's, you're welcome. No we're glad to have you. Yeah. And I think we're going to have some fun, because you have a lot of cool products. Uh, a lot of cool rigs here that, geez, we can just keep going over and over. Yeah, like this 15 Summit. Yeah. Okay, so. With the 174 3 inch, look at that crap. I mean, that's just. I know. I know. Whoever thought the factory would put that together. Now, I'm not a, I'm not a brand smasher. I don't by any means. I love them all. Uh, every brand has a model that I like. There's no doubt about it. When I first saw this sled, when they, when they announced that this was coming out, I thought it was going to be underpowered with that track. Okay. At altitude, like at, at your higher altitudes. So you still think that? You think that's probably the case, or what are you thinking? Well, that's what, that's what I'm thinking without, um, you know, uh, uh, air being forced they're, down its throat. They're already adding dribbles to, to the old style, so... If they were underpowered. They were just well, that's just it. Like this is a this is a this is a factory sled setup with a, now a longer track and a three-inch lug. So then they go and they run a lower first gear, I think. Yep, they uh, drop the gear in in the gear case. That's my I check with he's the Devin guy. there because he knows he's, stuff. He's the man. And so yeah. then and so then we've got a lower first gear and we've got more weight to spin and you know just a overall bigger package. It's um, well. It's all about track speed with something like this when you're in the deep, the steep and deep. Right. right you know? And so it's geared good, but um, it's going to be. A, I mean, you get flotation here that you didn't have, um, and some traction. What, what's your what, what, what are your thoughts on the stock at the elevations you guys are running here? Power wise. Yeah, I. Like I what is this, we, Devin? What does this put out? Uh, out of the box. Uh, they're about 160 at crank is what they've been dying of. At, at sea level. Yeah, at sea level. Okay. So at elevation, you're probably 150, 140 maybe? Yeah, it's a little bit less than that. I think we could do the math and find out, but I think it's a little bit less than that. And yeah. and you're, you're going to feel it, but but really, you know, the mountain riders are used to that hit they take on power anyway. Right. So... Um, I think that this snowmobile, you know, I hear some guys say, we're going to get ourselves a 174, and then we won't need a turbo. Wow. And, um, you know, some of those guys, if you want to just put around slow and easy and kind of tractor around, I think they're, they're <laughs> on the, you know, they're probably right. But this could turn out to be like a go-anywhere sled with some horsepower. Right. We just have to see. So now, now you've got this in here. Obviously, you're going to start your. Well, a lot of this uh, engine-wise is very similar to what, what last year's model. Is there, are there many changes? It's, no, it's, it's the same, same engine. It is the same. So, so you're basically just going to doll this up, put your package in it, and. Uh... Uh, there's a couple changes we need to make. The chain case is rolled back a little bit, oh, that's and right. there's there's some things. Uh, that's happening so uh, we got to do a little bit of fit and then we've also got some some other uh, cool little 
pieces that will go into the 15. Um, but yeah, it's pretty much just put a turbo on it and take her out. But you're going to have to take it out in the field and test it and see what, you, uh, what needs to be done to it. To yep. Capitalize on everything that you've done to it. Now, you must have a pretty good relationship with just about every uh, dealer of products in the area. This, because you must have to bring a pile of machines in for your R&D processes. Like when things change, you need to get the you need to get the new 1,000 in. Right. You need to do the work on it. Do, or or do, would you bring somebody's in? Hey, uh, hey, Louie, you bring your razor in here. We'll put a turbo on. We rather it. we'd rather not exactly. do that because in it, inevitably something is <laughs> going to go wrong, and, and we don't want people that suffer with us, so yes, we yeah. like to just suffer yes. on our own. Precisely extra connecting what? rods. Yeah. Right? Yeah. Louis, you got me get extra connecting rods. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, we just threw a rod, Louis. I'm sorry yeah, about that. Yeah, it's going to cost you. Yeah. yeah, then that's precisely why I get a lot of people asking me, uh, Louis, can you build me a custom sled? No. I'll, no, I'll never build a custom sled for anybody. I couldn't personally ever do that because... Uh, uh, yeah, I'm just not into that because I wouldn't want that responsibility. Well, we do like doing that. Um, we do like building sleds, building razors, building stuff for people. You know, we have a full service shop and and, uh, and a shop where we can build things. Um, that's a little bit different question than uh, here's a brand new model and we need to go out and do some, uh, some finish work to make it ready to build a product. We really don't like to use customers' vehicles to right. build a product off of. Once we got her done and established, then yeah, we we love building for people. Yeah, that's for fun. sure. That's what your business is about. And the 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 type of equipment uh, that we're seeing coming out from the uh, manufacturers is pretty outstanding. The 1000, the Maverick, you know, all these machines. Um, when you're looking at something like this, like you have a customer in here from uh, out of out of uh, country, looking at uh, buying a, 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 has I believe purchased a one thousand. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, this is Faisal's thousand. Say Faisal's thousand. So, um, you know, we've discussed this in the past. When I met Faisal earlier, he's pretty good. Does he? You don't mind being on camera? No, no, no. All right. Okay, Faisal, Louis Kibo from Parma. Nice to meet you, Louis. You are from Saudi, Saudi Arabia. Arabia. Saudi Arabia, he yep. came here for this. <laughs> You're not in town on business. No, because pleasure. it's uh, Idaho Falls. I'm, I'm still want. I still want to figure out what the big business is. Oh, I did see the Budweiser uh, like granary over the there. The big business in Idaho or in, uh, in Idaho Falls. Idaho Falls is the Idaho National Laboratory. So right out here on the desert, there's a laboratory that uh, started with nuclear uh, testing. And I think the first um, nuclear power plant. Breeder reactor. The first breeder reactor. Oh, well, there you go. The f is right out here. And ever since then, we've got a whole pile of really smart guys that hang out in Idaho Falls. Part of the reason that we're able to do what we do is because those guys like to, you know, after work and, and different things, we've got a couple of scientists that... Um, we're good friends with that help us do some of the things we do, especially with electronics and and some of the questions that we have. They they work through them with us. Well, that so that's what happens here. That's why Idaho Falls is Idaho Falls is originally here because this was the place that they crossed the river to get to Oregon. Ah, uh, so okay, okay. So sorry, we left Faisal in the dark. Oh, okay, now why did you come here? Like uh, I looked over the internet and I figured that boondockers are the best people for turbos. Okay, so they don't, they they don't. You can't get anything like that in no. Saudi Arabia. I've nope. seen what happens in Saudi Arabia. You're looking at some high horsepower, some yeah. crazy machines. Yeah, too high. Patrols, uh, Land, cruisers, Land Cruisers, all kinds of models. FJs, yeah, all that fun stuff. <clears throat> but you're into something a little different. You've tried out this one thousand. The Razor one thousand. Yeah. Yes, I think it's more capable. Maintenance on it is less, on the fun factor is a lot more. Yeah. You more one of the vehicle. That's just kind of my point of view. Yeah. And you found Boondocker and you've come out here and you've been here for a few days. Two days. Yeah. Two days. I'm definitely coming back out here again. It's uh, I absolutely I've been here, love it. <laughs> I've been here uh, 10 minutes and yeah, already I'm pretty impressed with everything. And we're going to just keep asking questions. It's, I know we have some things that you want to do, you want to cover while we're here. Right. Um, 
what were you what were you thinking? You you you, you need to install a turbo kit on his. Machine, well, Faisal's car is getting a whole bunch of parts, and we're just gonna um, just start uh, building it, and we want to you know do that with you. Um, cover the turbo, cover the engine work, cover the suspension work, and different things that we're going to do to it. Um, some of the parts are uh, still in transit. We'll be here Monday. Okay. Um, so, like the seats and um, different. Okay few different things but that's kind of what we'd like to do and we're gonna to get to go and ride right we are gonna take you ride <laughs> okay in fact me and Faisal are gonna run off and go now and you guys work and we'll come back oh man well maybe we won't all right we'll stick around but um, oh no why don't we go with you <laughs> <laughs> sounds great well how far are these dunes from here I Sand dunes in I did I had no idea. I'm from eastern Canada. I we we're used to some snow and some mud. Not used to uh, sand dunes in this part of the world. For me, is I'm not, I didn't know. Yeah, they're just kind of sitting there, and it, there's not a real good explanation. I mean, your geologists sort of tell you why they're there, but you know, I think just sand just blows around and piled up there. Yeah, it pretty much does. Like when so. you're when you're flying in, it's a Totally different train. All of a sudden, sand dunes. You just see them sort of pop, popping out. Did you see them? I did. Well, I, well, I don't know if I saw the exact ones we're going to be on, but I saw sand dunes in areas. Uh -huh. Definitely flying in. Yeah, yeah, from it, Colorado. I mean, we don't have a lot of sand. Um, the soil's a bit sandy, mostly just clay, mud, yeah. and then we've just got a lot of volcanic. Uh, um, you know, I mean, we're just south of. Yellowstone National Park and so this is this is a volcanic kind of an area and that I think produces some sand. Okay so um, we're at about 4700 feet altitude. Yep. And these dunes are used to, like pretty darn big right? You said they're... Oh what do we get? A thousand feet vertical maybe um, on you know from the bottom of a dune to the top it, it could be a thousand vertical feet. Oh, that's that's I'm all right. just going to use that number. <laughs> I don't know if it's right. You think that's right? What is the altimeter? Yeah? Wow, that's a, that's a big pull. So I can see where all this sort of stemmed from. Well, as guys, we're always looking for more power. That usually tends to uh, drive certain things. But we're at a higher elevation here. And uh, sand is power robbing. Right. Right? So uh, it only makes sense that you started it with uh, nitrous, is that right? You started right. it with nitrous? Yep, Boondocker, uh, originally its first product was nitrous. And then we went to some electronics, um, up to uh, primarily because we needed to put nitrous on fuel-injected motors. When the fuel-injected snowmobiles came out, we needed to still sport nitrous, and, and we had a carbureted system at the time, and so then um, we built our fuel control box right. and um, from there we had control over all the same stuff that we needed control over to be able to start turboing things and, and um, the turbo apexes RX-1 and apexes and then the M7 and um, <clears throat> and so then we do that as well and there's a few other little things that we do mostly we're just performance minded if it seems like um, it needs help we kind of focus in on it and snow bikes make it happen. Are the, uh, the, the, the snow bikes are one of the newer things yeah it's uh, for sure yeah. huge challenge to try and uh, so but you've got a kit for that oh yeah yeah you've got kits for that yeah I've seen uh, I've seen your bikes racing up the dunes as well uh, in the video right Right on. Are you going to bring a bike out too? Do you have one? Yeah, I think Manny will come out with his <coughs> bike. Manny's on his bike. He'll bring his bike out. Oh, yeah? I, I, I'm not much of a bike rider. <laughs> I drove, he's got a 250. What is it? 250, I think. Honda. Yeah, Honda 250. I've driven it once. That's pretty much my bike driving experience. Um, mostly sleds and, and uh, ATVs, UTVs kind of stuff for me. But, uh, yeah. Very cool. Here you go, Wyatt. This is Wyatt. I'm Wyatt. Louis Skibo, nice to meet you. Nice to meet you. What's uh, Wyatt's position here? Wyatt is our engine builder. He's engine builder. He 
We're yeah. gonna have fun with it. Right. Why it's like fourth generation auto mechanic. It's my yeah. son. It's kind of what we do is work on stuff. Cool. This is definitely a family. Yeah, family, friends. Yeah. It's that small town feel. Just yep. like uh, a lot of the other companies that I deal with in this area, very similar feel. There's no doubt about it. And Idaho Falls seems to be popular for snowmobile related companies. Yeah, that, I don't know why that is. It's amazing. <clears throat> you know, Harris Publishing uh, does Snow West Magazine, right. Sledheads Magazine. They're here in Idaho Falls. And I think that that kind of somehow makes it easy. I know that I started in the snowmobile business because they did a story about my nitro system. The next thing you know is a business. I mean, just like that. So, there you go. Um, and so then, what do we got? We got uh, Climb has grown out of Idaho Falls. Yeah. Um, starting Line Performance was probably the first in the area. Um, HPS, Motor Fist. Fist. <clears throat> and uh, there's some, there's some more too. Yeah. Very good. Well, I don't want to keep you because you said you had to go and do some riding. So what you're gonna go do? <laughs> we'll sit here, I guess. <laughs> yeah, you good. We'll see you later. Hey, you see you, <laughs> you just got here. <laughs> Okay, let's check out the fab shop. Yeah, let's go ahead and check it out. So this is what I really do. I don't really push mocks that often, <laughs> but not above it. Yeah, I know. You've been doing this for a while, so obviously you've got your hands right. Yeah, pretty much. Eighth grade, summer came along, and I decided to do some homeschooling, and then my dad brought me in and kind of taught me how to fabricate and weld, and then I've been working here happily ever since. Wow. So, um, See, probably three, four years now, yeah. maybe closer to five now. Yeah, something like that. And then I just kind of started doing some production work over time and then just started getting better and better. And I'll kind of show you some of the stuff we do. This is a uh, tie how muffler for a fro. And so we get all the sheet metal that we've designed, uh, built, you, cut it and lasered out from a shop here locally. And then we just assemble it. So and you, you, it. You, you take all this up? Yep, hand TIG welding. Look at that. Look at that. That looks great. Mm -hmm. That's a piece of art. It is, and they're, they're a very popular part for us, and so this is going, super, yeah. super high performance. They sound good, and they're all designed here in like a SolidWorks program that my dad does. Right. And he sends them over to the company, they laser them out, and then we build them. And we do a couple different versions, the tie-out, and then we do the standard, and then other parts and flanges we have built. So this kind of raw parts, and then we just kind of put them together back Okay, here. so uh, what kind of, uh, most, mostly everything is built right here in the United States and right here in Idaho. Hopefully. Pretty much. Everything, everything that we do is sourced out. Like we'll buy some bends from a certain company, and then we just get them. We have a bunch of raw inventory parts here. Right. And then we just use those to build the parts here. We'll cut them, fab them, prep them, and then weld them together. So you've got your intercoolers. Are these, these are some Razor Thousand intercoolers. They're water air. <laughs> yeah, these are a water air. 
these ones uh, we got to do a little bit of repair on. Um, you know, people just beat the crap out of them, and then it's time for some repair. You know, yeah, yeah, yeah. every now and then. Yeah. And so, but they're the same thing. Sheet metal bent up, and then we. Did you guys start them. using uh, air to air, and then went to? Uh, water? We do, We have done some watered air uh, air to airs before, like on the 900s. That's our standard kit. But for the thousand, we went straight to watered air because we did some testing on the 900, and it was far more consistent, totally better performance. I did uh, with my Land Cruiser. I used uh, air to air on it, mm -hmm. and then I put the water. It only mm -hmm. makes sense for uh, for this kind of application. Mm -hmm. you know? Yeah, water air is. You've always got it working for you. Yeah. And then these are some Skidoo XM intercoolers. This is this is actually the work of uh, my little brother Drake. He's one year younger than I am, and uh, we brought him on earlier this year, not too long ago, to do some aluminum welding. And seriously, um, Mike and I have been working with him uh, to just kind of improve his welds, and he's been doing a phenomenal job putting this stuff together. And he's got less experience welding than I have, and he's doing a phenomenal job. That's awesome. So okay, so hold on. So there's you and Wyatt. Wyatt's uh, Wyatt's my uncle, but he's a year younger than I am. Oh, okay. Because so, <laughs> he's my dad's dad's youngest son. So. Oh. Yep. All right. Okay. And then so and then you have your other bro your brother and then Drake. Drake. And then one more little brother. His name's Draxton. He's like 14, 15. Okay. And then my little sister at home. So. All right. Are they and they are they gonna come into the business too? I doubt my little sister will, but Draxton kind of wants to, yeah. so we'll see. Oh, you never know. Yeah. Well, she likes to come down. down. I got uh, tire shoes. Yeah. Well, I just bought them. At least, at, least, at least mine stayed on me, eh? <laughs> <laughs> see, that's why I leave mine loose enough. Just we were running it, Well, we were running across the airport there today in uh, Washington, and it was uh, full bore, and he had a pair of Crocs on. Yeah, my safety oh, Crocs. Man. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. The safety Crocs. <laughs> With no straps. So what else, uh, what else do you build here? Well, um, well, we have a bunch of stuff. I'll show you another part right here that I just finished doing, or I'm in the process of. These are the tie owl inlets to match. The, off, uh, this off. is for a wastegate yeah, because the tie owl, what the tie owl is, is an, ext an external wastegate housing because there's no wastegate in the turbo. So it's an all stainless uh, okay. V band uh, flange housing. Right. And so we need some sort of boost control, and that's what the wastegate will do. So this is like our premium package performance deal. And so it's all stainless hardware for longevity, looks, reliability, and a little bit better performance, you know, better yeah. boost control, yeah. things like this that. This is just to keep the, oh, I see. the fumes and stuff. And so these are actually 900 parts right here. These are the inlets. Yeah. And so they will uh, bolt to the turbo. Um, we're doing some turbo housings, 2060 turbo housings for some razors. What I are guess. you paying that? Those way. Um, this is a Cerakote coating. We're just trying it out. <coughs> This stuff here is from Glacier Black. It's a ceramic coating paint. It's supposed to be super, super tough. So we'll give it a try and see how it works. Yeah, yeah. Very cool. Okay, let's get out and build that thing. Cool. Let's, let's do, do it. First one. Okay, question and answer period is over. We've gotten to know the guys a little bit in the last 15 or 20 minutes. But what we're going to do now is we're going to build up Faisal's Razor 1000. Razor 1000. And, you know, uh, you're from Saudi Arabia. Yeah. Why did you come all the way here to get one of these? We don't have these back home. And that's kind of the reason why I'm over here. I wanted to bring them back. Not only bring them back, I wanted to bring them back with the boondock turbo and provide the most proper, best maintenance possible. And just have a blast with them out there. So you, you're running your dunes. Yep. And you need, uh, I don't see many of these things. Uh, I watched videos of the guys climbing the no, dunes no. in Saudi Arabia. I, I, I don't know if I've seen any. Maybe one no, no, very few, very few. Uh, we don't have a uh, dealer out there for them. For some weird reason. Yeah. And uh, hopefully I could tackle that obstacle. Yeah, yeah, well, there you go. Um, and you came here just for this? Yep. You weren't Especially for this, no, no. Wow. So this is your exact machine that you're going to be shipping back home? Yep, this is it. And you've driven this one already, and it's an amazing machine. Lots of fun. Yeah, the Ray, the Razor 1000 is just a, You it's can't an go wrong with it. It's an but when you're climbing your dunes, the sand rubbing, uh, or the, the power rubbing sand, Super. it just Super. sucks the power back. It, right? it takes all your power. From what I see, you can never have enough horsepower on soft sand. Yeah. Yeah. That's where the Boondock Turbo comes in. Well, out. how did you find Boondock? I was just looking on YouTube online, and everything that comes out was Boondock. 
Well, you know, we'll go ahead. Well, I was going to say, when I met Faisal, we met at the sand, the sand, at the sand show. He came in, he says, hey, I've talked to somebody at the, you know, on the phone at Boondocker, and we had a car sitting there, and we just started going over it. He's like, I really want to build one of these. It needs a turbo. And that's kind of where we started. At the same time, we were there. TMW was there. Yep. Um, they had just hooked us up with some cages. He liked some of what he saw. We went over there and talked to those guys, um, kind of picked something custom out there. Uh, had the, we had Zebro's arms on the, all suspension arms and stuff on the one that was there. We had another, a magazine build, Dirt Toys car was there with the Fox shocks. And so we just start, started kind of putting this whole um, custom, you know, whole car build together. It was really exciting to send really something exciting. over to Saudi Arabia because when I think of sand dunes, I mean, when I think of Saudi Arabia, I think there's got to be sand a lot dunes. of sand yeah, dunes. Yeah. sand dunes. And you know and what? You, this is going to be very popular over there. You're going to be, uh, there are going to be a lot of jealous people when they see this That's what piece. I'm planning on doing. Yeah. It was, it was amazing. We took, it, we took Faisal out yesterday in this stock, and, and I, I was a little bit, I've taken a lot of guys riding on the sand, guys that have experience in razors, guys that have experience on sand dunes, and they cannot hang, and they are dangerous. And so I told Faisal, I'm like, Maybe I should drive for a minute and so you can kind of learn the ropes and then I'll hand it over to you. And he says, no, I think I'll be okay. And I'm like, I'm riding with him. Just follow us. <laughs> and he did. He, I mean, we rode pretty hard and he you was right hard. there. He knows the sand. Yeah. And first time in a razor ever. Yeah. He just got in and just was rallying the tops with us. And you'll see when we take this back out in a couple of days when we're done building it. How we how we ride out there? It's extreme, but he know he knows the sand really well. Good Obviously, point. has spent yeah. a lot of time on. Well, you know that's this is a good point. Uh, you've never ridden one of these before, no, but first time. This thing, I've always said that the Razor will perform um, like any kind of rally car at a fraction of the cost. So it gets you into that type of uh, into that type of machine for next to nothing. Anybody can do it. Anybody can get in at very little expense compared to building something. They can, like, yeah. you, know, the, you, know, the, you know, you can dump half a million bucks into a, a crazy car, right? They're phenomenal. And this thousand, they really raised the bar with the suspension. The, the horsepower that's available, um, what we're putting together here is a, is a low octane. It's going to be a 91 octane. The, okay. the, the fuel in Saudi Arabia is 95 octane. Mm -hmm. And so it's going to be that's set right. up to run, to run that. Um, it's not a race gassing, but it's, but it's still a really high horsepower. We have some electronic advantages that we haven't had in the past that that are gonna right now we've been running at 4700 feet we've been running 15 pounds of boost on 91 octane and it's like a rocket ship wow. they're fast and so uh, just, you're in saudi arabia where do you get your fuel from <laughs> uh, okay so what are we going to do to this i'm not gonna uh, i'm gonna I don't want to touch a whole lot. Everybody's seen me build things before, and uh, that's why I took my watch off, because scrape, scrape. You know, I don't want to be too uh, heavy-handed on your machine. But we're going to go over everything that you're going to do to it, and um, I'll help you a little bit, but I don't want to wreck it. So uh, what are we going to do exactly to this? Well, the first thing we're going to do is we're going to do an in-frame on the engine. And so what I mean by in-frame is we're going to do rods and pistons. The rods and pistons in the stock form, they're just not robust enough to take the power that we're going to put out it. Um, we can do that in, with the motor still in the chassis, and so we'll show you guys how to do that. Um, then we're going to put our turbo on it. Uh, some of the other products that we've just uh, that we've just come out with is we have a large desert radi radiator. It's about twice as big as a stock radiator, which is obviously yeah. what they're going to need in 100 degree air, uh, yeah. air in Saudi Arabia. Yeah. Um, we have big clutches. And so what we mean by big clutches is we've taken clutches that are uh, they're full size, biggest stuff you can get. They're off of a snowmobile. The belt is about a quarter inch wider than the stock uh, Polaris Razor belt. Um, and then we have some high clearance um, suspension arms for the rear. Right. And we have some high clearance plus two front end suspension arms. These are all from Zebros. Um, and the plus two is, doesn't make it wider. It actually moves it two inches further forward. So it gives you a longer wheelbase. Um, they rock crawl better. They're smoother in the in the rough stuff. stable. And they're high clearance. So yeah, high clearance a little for cresting the dunes. I, mm -hmm. Dunes are new to me. So uh, yeah, I'm going to be that guy that you're going to say, yeah, just uh, go with me for a little bit. <laughs> mm -hmm. <laughs> but uh, okay, uh, cage. Yeah, we have a TMW cage. Um, it's a new. I think they call it the 
V23. It's a it was a V2 front and a V3 back that they've they've. It's a brand new uh, style that they've just come out with. Um, that just showed up. Uh, we have some uh, what were they triple X so. uh, seats Thanks. that are they're not here yet. I think they'll be here on Monday. Okay. Um, we've got uh, internal bypass Fox shocks on order for them. them. Those have been so popular that they're completely out of stock. And so Fox actually built them yesterday. They'll ship on Monday. So, uh, we have a set on some other cars we'll demo, but this car's getting them next week. But you, uh, you do some work to the, or you, you set up the shocks before you send them out, right? Like yeah. you've done a lot of testing. With yeah. We've things. been working with the, with the shocks. We've done a lot of different testing with the walkers, the stock walkers, revalved, resprung, and then we've run these Fox, uh, internal bypass shocks. And we've been working with Fox on that to get the calibration right for the horsepower and the sand. And so we've got a combination put together. Um, it'll come, it'll come in from Fox pretty much set up like we want. We might, uh, change the spring, uh, the spring adjustments a little bit. Okay. And, uh, tires, do we go over tires? T tires. We've got our, our custom build that they're a scat track tire. Um, that it's a combination that we've worked with a bunch of combinations this year and we found what works the best for us. It turns out to be a, um, it's just kind of our special recipe. We've got uh, a couple sets of those. Faisal, is a while, with excited. wisdom, he bought a couple sets to ah, take back home thinking. with him. Yeah, yeah. And so, yeah. Well, you might as well fill the seats up, right? Oh, I'm uh, filling everything up. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Good. Right on. Well, uh, what else? Anything else? Um, oh, the, the electronics. We've got a Bully yes. Dog um, GT tuner. And so that gets us broke into the ECU. And so we have unlimited control over the ECU, timing, fuel control, everything. This is where we get a lot of the pump gas ability at high okay. boost. Um, so well, we'll he's, had a, he's had a bit of an advantage too because he's riding Saudi Arabia sea level. Mm -hmm. And, uh, you know, you're not, you're not dealing with high elevations. Yep. So anything below, you know, it's going to be a below 1,500, 2,000 feet for sure. Yeah, yeah, that'd be the most. Yeah, yeah. So a bit of an advantage there too, especially fuel-wise, right? Well, what and happens that. is actually the lower altitude you go, the the more dense the air is, and the higher the octane of requirements oh, are. That's true, too. And yeah. so we really have we yeah, have it's going to be hotter than. Uh, oh, it's going to be super hot. That's right. We've been doing some testing in California on the coast, and so we're really that's how we know we can do pump gas at that at that kind of that sea level. So. Testing. 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 We test all the time. It's, it's really a rough job. Yeah, we do really. that like three days a week. We're on the sand. I think we were saying, I think we, each of us, there's about three of us that drive probably 2,500 miles on the sand every year. Wow. And uh, Sounds amazing. Just, Those are hard miles it's on the machine. Hard miles, yep. Yep. That's good. Okay, well, let's uh, let's get into this. And uh, I see this big giant box here. Mm -hmm. that's, uh, that's, your, that's your kit. That's the turbo kit. There right it on. is. Okay, well, let's do it. Uh, first thing you're going to do, you said you're going to you're going to take apart this engine and you're going to do it in we're going to do an in frame we'll do a tear down we'll take off all the stuff that we're not going to put back on the stock exhaust stuff like that um and while i'm doing that jared will work on the front he's going to do the big radiator and he'll probably okay. do the suspension arms while the front clips off right on where is a radiator that is a big radiator whoa for a nice radiator Okay, so here. This. Um, okay, I'll get this back cover here. You get the forward. Take the air off. I got okay. this. Well, <laughs> nice. <laughs> That's helpful. Very. Right, thank you. Seats are the yeah. cool thing to add to these. Yes. Um, let's take the seats and flip them somewhere. You gotta go home tomorrow. I'm thinking about canceling the flight. <laughs> I really am thinking about canceling the flight. Can you do that? Can you cancel the whole flight? Yeah. Yeah, of course. I just gotta sleep in. <laughs> So the uh, the stock exhaust from the manifold back is coming off, or is that the stock header is going to come off, and the muffler, the stock muffler will go back on. We're actually going to do a custom Barker exhaust on this after after this, okay. but our kit accommodates for a stock slip-on. Okay. Mm -hmm. A stock muffler or a, a, a anything that's a aftermarket slip-on will work. Okay. Mm -hmm. 
think so. I think we're like an eight. There's a uh, 3.5 liters. A lot more room in here. I think that's about what it is. About 3.5. There's a lot of room in there. There's a lot of room in there compared to the 900. Four. Wow. It's probably not quite four. I think that huh. 3.5 sounds about right. So up this here, radiator here, putting on um, this new radiator. Uh huh. Is looks to be like about double the size of that. Yeah, it's about a little bit bigger than double the size. So yeah. It's a direct replacement, just um, direct bolt in, no cut, yeah. no modifying, comes with all the bracketry. You take out your stock, stock fan bracket and mounting system, drop right back in it, bolt it right back in. So it's just a real quick so no, modification. So no mods, like no uh, fabricating or No drilling. cutting, fabricating, cutting, trimming. This direct wow. drop in. This is a lot easier to get into the, than the 900. So yeah. And one other thing we did too is we like kind of uh, angled our filler cap so you can actually check and fill your antifreeze. <laughs> pretty inconvenient, yeah. you know, how this works Good on idea. this stock system. So Good idea. pretty cool little deal. So. Yep. Okay, well, if you leave a couple bolts in it, is that all right? If we you drain it all right? It? Nope, I haven't yet. Yeah. Yeah. You don't have a liquid back? Yeah. Let's see here. So we got some more, uh, <coughs> buckets for bolts. I guess we'll just use this one. Okay. okay. It's also nicer working on a brand new machine, right? Oh, yeah. You would want to try to do that with mine. Plus mug. That's with the muck. Yeah. So quite often, Rocky, yeah. you guys will bring a, a machine in here that's having a whole bunch of custom work done, and you'll have it done in a couple days. Yeah, we don't. Um, it doesn't take a lot, you know. You just jump on it, get her done, and tear the motor down, build it, put a turbo on it, whatever else we're doing. Yep. Now. Yeah, I think we have another. I got that top one. Take the clutch cover off. Take that little rattle gun, that little electric gun, and then go in that drawer, the uh, third one down that one your hands on, and there should be an eight millimeter. Quarter inch standing right here. Yeah, it was pants, yeah. Okay. So what happens here is this is gonna hook up the bottom. Right. And these are gonna just go right into this. Bracketry. You lock tape them or? Nope. They got lock one. Plastic. <laughs> did you spec these out or did they already have these made? Well, it was kind of crazy. I was coming across it just Google searching and found a core, but we completely build all this ourselves. All the filler necks, all of the holes, all the parts we machine it. We just found a core that was, you know, about the spec that we needed and good to go. Okay. Now we have room for a water to air intercooler. <laughs> So do you lower the compression or just upgrade the components? We lower the compression too. Yeah. Yep, yep. Okay. we're going to go clear down to their stock 10 and a half to one. We're going to go clear down to eight and a half to one yeah. on this okay. one. So we're going to use a nine and a half to one piston and then we have a custom gasket made that's thicker to bring it down that other uh, point. So this will be this will be for a pump gas application yeah. is what part of the reason that we're going that low. Oh I see, I see, I see. So what valve cover comes off? Mm -hmm. Yeah, so First we've got we've got the down. air box and the throttle bodies off. And so now we're gonna pull we'll pull the valve cover, the cams, and then the head and the cylinder. So we'll see how fast we can yeah. really wants to use his jack. Okay. 
This is a stock timing chain tensioner. And so we actually have a replacement for that. Why is that? This, is, this one's hydraulic. And what we've found is that they tend to fade sometimes. So sometimes they'll fade under high RPMs. Or the other thing that'll happen is if you're low oil pressure after changing the oil, um, or when you first start them up, sometimes the timing chain will rattle and then it'll, and then it'll jump time. So this is just a hydraulic plunger. It gets, uh, has an oil feed now somewhere right here. There's an oil feed there and then it pushes the plunger out and bleeds out there. Okay. And that's what keeps the stock tension on the timing chain. But we're done with that. We have a mechanical automatic tensioner that'll replace it. It's like a screw drive, so it yeah, yeah, constantly yeah. keeps it tight. Like on the old Honda, uh, well, not like yep, on the Honda. It's like, it's like on a Japanese bike, motorcycle. Yeah. Yep, just sort of works itself down. Yep. Mark anything, but all, any marks, they just use shims in there. These, they used to use shims in the buckets, hey Devin? Yeah. How'd you like? So this is, uh, this is a bucket, or a tappet. This surface, they come in different thicknesses from oh, here okay. to here. And that's how you adjust your valves. You change these out. The 900s actually had shims in them. Okay. Mm -hmm. And I think that they went to this. Uh, I think it's more dependable. I think the shims could move. Maybe cause uh, keepers to come loose. Yeah, stuff like that. Yeah. So they went to that. What we do is uh, when we, after these have miles on them, we take them over to the machine shop and they do what we call nip the valves. So they actually machine the top of the valve off so that we don't have to stock hundreds of these different buckets. So you just shorten it over. Yep, make. because the valves are always, as they wear into the seats, they, the valve rides higher and higher in the head so oh, they get, yeah. the clearance gets tighter. And so you can always just take a little bit off the valve. That's very cool. And typically when we make adjustments to the um, valve clearance, it's looser. We like the valve clearance to run on Maybe the bit. loose side of spec instead of the tight side of spec. Yeah. That way it gives them room to wear. It's That's right. Enough. And gives them room to expand. For, and, um, yeah. that makes Loosen the bolts in the same sequence that we would tighten them in. Okay. So that it stays flat. Yeah, there is. You might just want to Where are you going with it? Well, it makes me a spot. Are you going to stay there or are you coming out? Go, on, go into the bench. There. Okay. Um, let's. Uh, yeah. That rag so it doesn't look Thank you. You made them dirty. What's that in him? Your clothes undone? Yep. Those are the ones that come forward more. Yeah, they're a plus two, longer wheelbase. 
yeah. gives us nice. uh, clearance for you know bigger tires. Uh, just gives us more fender well clearance. Plus, you know, changes the ride, gives it the feel of a longer wheelbase, a little more stable. There we go. That's cool. It's tapered in. How many of these 1000s have you done this to? Um, I don't know, a lot. Seems like we do a couple of them a week. A couple of what? A week. Oh, yeah? Yeah. Oh. There you go. I was just going to say, watch your eyes. <laughs> you take one in the eye. I like that technique. The pushing. Yeah, there we go. Better than the banging with the hammer method. Be be yeah, better, better than the hammer method. We typically wouldn't pull the clutch covers and everything, but Faisal wanted big clutches and the big belt. Okay. And so he's going to pull all of that stuff. It'll make it a little bit easier to work on the engine anyways. Oh, it's under. Yeah, this is just this. This is the crude one. I got a cooler one. It comes into play in a minute. Okay, well, so. this is important because, like, honestly, I watch a lot of videos on uh, YouTube and the internet, and a, a, a guy that I look up to quite a bit works on jet engines a lot, okay. and he has to fabricate just about every tool to work on these 1950s, 60s, 70s models because he just can't get the the tools that you need to work. And this, I was wondering how you're going to get to the bottom of that uh, under, underside of the uh, connecting rods to undo the bolts. And this is it. This is it. So you've made yourself a little, basically a, uh, a 180 degree universal joint. Or yeah, kind of. Yeah. What would you call it? Yeah, 180 degree uh, extension. Yeah. yeah. Very cool. So uh, this will break them loose. And then I have a gear to gear that will run them out. I'll show you in a minute. That's a true craftsman right there. True mechanic. Yeah, that's a mechanic. Right that's a mechanic. MacGyver. Do I hear your secrets Will you out? Grab, yeah. yeah, whatever. Grab a. Um, <laughs> <laughs> that's good. I don't want to do them all. What do you want? <laughs> you want to do a, a longer extension. One of my good friends that's a dealer for me he made a tool like this. He does the, the whole job like this one. Little eighth turn at a time. The patience thing. It is the patience thing. Okay. Oh, uh, yeah, yeah. So it's not it's not geared inside. It's just it's a fixed. This one's fixed. It's fixed. Ah, it's got a gear on the ones it's loose. So this is. Uh, okay. So this is your geared yes. gizmo. This is my geared one. This one's oh, fixed. Oh yeah, I like that. Yeah. That's good. That's it. You never lost that down there? This one? <laughs> no. I welded it. And oh, then it's on a locking extension, so. Yeah, uh, okay. crank food. <laughs> <laughs> Feed your crank. <laughs> what is? <laughs> now this is really cool. cool. Well, this is one of the things that's really cool. This connecting rod. And we'll talk about this a little bit. Look at this connecting rod. If you notice, I can get stable there. It's broken. Yeah. This is what they call a cracked rod. Oh, so and so it's actually made in a process where they break it and then machine the hole. And this is as strong as one solid piece would be once it's bolted back together because of all the surface area from the break. Yeah. Pretty impressive. It's a really strong way to make a rod. The Japanese invented it because they started using less expensive materials and they weren't as strong. And so if you look at how beefy that rod is, yeah. and you think about how brittle the material has to be to crack it like that, yeah. this is why we're replacing these rods, because they tend to crack up here. They break up here. And oh. so we put a lot of stress on them. 
the new rod is okay. the new rod and piston combination is like four ounces lighter than this oh, rod wow. and piston. So, so, so you t you put your system on a stock one and you've broken the rods there. We have broken, yeah, we've broken stock rods. Um, I've seen some guys break them at different boost levels. Mm -hmm. We broke one rod in one of ours, and it was at 20 plus pounds. But I've seen them break it at lower, uh, lower boost levels. Um, it's just, I don't think it's a superior design, so mm -hmm. we're going to get rid of them. We right. highly recommend that you replace them. And if four ounces lighter, that's uh, pretty substantial, right? Yep. You know what? And I have seen this kind of rod before. But it's been that time. See if you can break it. Because I wondered, I'm like, what the heck happened to that rod? I have seen this before. It's going to do 1,200 or 1,200 four stroke cast crack rods. Oh, is that right? Because they use cheap Japanese material. <laughs> I don't know. I don't know. Don't comment. The, the, the skidoo rods, I think, are actually very good. That's cool. You just wonder how, it, when they're cracking it, it doesn't stress out the rest of it all. Like, but even when, even when it's together, and you try to pull it apart, it still is. There's like when you try to twist it, it's longitudinally almost. That's, that's very interesting. Um, I make sure to put the same bearing in the same side in the same direction that it came out. Um, and that's it. These rods, we do look check to make sure you don't know what size they are. These are number two rods. Polaris has three different rods they use. Oh, right. And do they usually mark? Yeah. You do, right? With a couple of wax? Or? Right there, see that number two? Oh, okay. So we gotta go across so, the, uh, the Carrillo rods that we're using measure the same as number two rods. This is the most common. I've seen one set of number ones out of all the ones that we've done. So when you're referring to that, that's the thickness here? No, what they measure is after they machine the board, they measure it and get a very precise oh, with the, measurement. With the plastic gauge? Or? They probably measure it with a um, some sort of bore gauge or uh, okay. a really fine... Uh, Do they still use plastic gauge? gauge? Yeah, 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 and we we'll use it sometimes on the bench too. Okay. Um, a preferred method can be to mic it, micrometer all of your components and then do the math, but plastic gauge is easy. Okay.